Hi students, I'm Divya. As we know, Wipro Elite 2020 is around the corner and we have been preparing for it rigorously. We have been studying quantitative aptitude, logical aptitude and verbal ability as well. So, today we are going to cover an important part of that verbal ability called as spotting errors or we can call it as sentence improvement or error identification. Okay, so what do you mean by this spotting errors or error identification? Yes, we have to identify an highlighted part of a sentence whether it is correct or incorrect, right? So that highlighted part can have multiple options with you so that you can identify which is the correct option or which is the correct sentence in here, okay? So what are these type of errors? Do you know? Let's see what these are. So first is subject verb agreement. So what do you mean by subject verb agreement here? that in a sentence there are three parts first is subject verb and object now the this verb depends upon the subject here this verb can vary according to this subject and uh, related to that many rules are given here so we will see one by one so rule number one here is that if subject is singular the verb should be singular and if we are taking the subject as in the plural form the verb should also be in a plural form. The examples are on the screen. Now here, the first sentence given is, the girls are dancing. Here, girls is an subject which is an plural form. Therefore, we are using are which is an plural form of verb. In the second sentence, the students were shouting. The students here is an plural form of subject. Therefore, we are using plural form of verb which is were. In the third one, Jane is reading. Now here, Jane is a singular subject. Therefore, we are using the singular form of verb. Now, rule number two. Now, what is rule number two? It is like that. When connected subjects are given, we use a plural form of verb. Now, what are these connected subjects here? So, first we will see directly through the examples. Examples are on the screen. Now first here is summer and winter are seasons. Now look here, we have used a connector called as and and we have connected two subjects summer and winter. Therefore we have used plural form of verb. In the second sentence, same, we have used connector called as and. Therefore the both subjects north and south are using plural form of verb. Now, rule number three. Here, in case of collective noun, we are using the singular form of verb. Now, what do you mean by collective noun here? We are treating a group of subject as a collective noun. Therefore, it is treated as one. Therefore, we use verb in its singular form. We will look after it with the help of examples here. The examples are on the screen. Now, in this one, First is, the poor is always honest. Now here, the poor is a collective type of noun. Therefore, we are using is, which is a singular form of verb. In the second sentence, the class is studying sincerely. In here, the class is a collective type of noun. Therefore, we are using singular form of verb, which is is. In the third sentence, same, the cow is very useful animal. Now here the cow can be treated as a singular one but here in the sentence the cow is representing the collection of that cows. Therefore the cow is treated as singular and collective noun. Therefore we are using is which is a singular form of verb. Now rule number four. If your sentences contains either or or neither nor type of conjunctions there are two subjects in here which goes with either and or and neither or nor. Now according to these subjects your verb varies. Now what is the interrelation between these two? If your subjects in either or and neither nor is singular, both the subjects are singular then we use singular form of verb and if any one of the subjects is plural we use the plural form of verb. Let's look at the examples which are on the screen. Now in the first one 
he either keeps the keys himself or leaves them with his wife now here in either and or the both the subjects are singular which is he and his keys or himself therefore we, what we have used here is leaves which is an singular form of verb now i like neither stephen nor peter here neither and nor has two subjects stephen and peter which both are singular therefore we are using singular form of verb which is like now rule number 5 what is this rule number 5 we often get confused between i and me here we cannot understand when to use i and when to use we let me clear uh, let me clear you with this that i whenever we are using i it is in the subject form and whenever we are using me it is in the object form now what is this subject and object form we know the sentence structure that is subject verb and object if i want to use i i will use it into the subject type or the subject part in a sentence and when i want to use me i will use it in the object part of that sentence so look at the examples on the screen you will get clear to this now in this one charlie and i don't follow the rules now here charlie and i here i have used i because i want to treat that i as in subject here that's why i have used i and not me here and in the object form granny bought me a sweet here granny is treated as subject therefore if i am using me this me is called as object here rule number 6 here is whenever your sentence begins or contains everyone each or anyone you use singular form of verb let's see with the examples examples are on the screen in the first one every one of the students loves to party now here your sentence is starting with every one so therefore we are using singular form of verb which is loves now in the second sentence each book was written with a pen or a brush here each your sentence is starting with each therefore we are using here singular form of verb which is was in the third one i don't think so anyone was timing me here anyone is contained into that sentence therefore we are using singular form of verb here now rule number 7 what is rule number 7 that if your verb is carrying an infinitive form of uh, uh, infinitive form or gerund form we have to continue with that now what is this rule exactly do you know what is infinitive form or gerund form of verb let's see what it is infinitive form of verb means it contains two or we can say verb is in its actual form and while we consider gerund form of verb there is an ing added to that type of word so this is the difference between infinitive form and gerund form of verb now what is this rule exactly we'll see uh, through the examples the examples are on the screen here if your uh, sentence is following an infinitive form of verb for example he loves to read write and sing here two is carried forward and in the second one he loves writing cooking and singing here gerund form is continued that is ing form of verb is continued now rule number 8 what is rule number 8 that is we need to identify the proper use of either neither any and none now what is the main difference between these two is any and none are considered for the group and either or neither are considered for one or two of them now uh, let's see this with the example here i asked two person about the mark street but none of them knew it here in the sentence none is used as we have seen none is to be considered with the group here but in the example there are only two person therefore none would be replaced by neither when there are two persons we can either accept one or the second one here we have to uh, we have to form a negative impact therefore we are using neither instead of either 
So the correct sentence here is I asked two persons about the Mark Street, but neither of them knew it. Now look at the example on your screen and identify if there is an error in it. The sentence goes as there were 50 students in my class and either of them could stand up and answer my question. Now identify what is the error here? Yes, correct. Here either is used. As we know either should be used for two forms or two subjects. Here there are 50 students. Therefore we cannot use either here. We have to replace that either with any. So the correct sentence here is there were 50 students in my class and any of them could stand up and answer my question. Now rule number 9. What is rule number 9? We know some words which are unnecessarily used in a sentence. These words are called as superfluous words. So what do you mean by superfluous words is there is no necessity of that word. It can be used or it cannot be but that is unnecessary use of that word. With the example we will see what are these. Example is on the screen. She looked too proper to be considered as beautiful and her expression was lofty. Here considered as these two words mean the same. In considered as is already included. So as is unnecessarily used here therefore we can say as is a superfluous word here. Rule number 10. So what is rule number 10? There are some connectors such as as well as, in addition to, including or along with. These type of collectors or connectors we can say use are dependent that the word is dependent upon the subject into that connectors. Now as we know connectors use multiple subjects. So the verb also depends upon the these two subjects here. Look at the examples on the screen. Here, Sally as well as her cousin have gone to states of states for a picnic. Here, her cousin is also singular and Sally is also singular. But we have to treat this action verb which is have, it's, uh, it should be dependent upon the subject which is nearby. Therefore, her cousin is singular, we have to use has which is replaced by have. So the correct sten sentence here is Sally as well as her cousin has gone to states for a picnic. Now in the second example, either Roma or her friends have committed this silly mistake. Now here Roma is singular but her friends is plural. Therefore we have considered have in relation, in relation to that subject which is nearest to it which is her friends. So the correct one is either Roma or her friends have committed this silly mistake. So here we have completed the first part which is subject verb agreement or we can say that it is an one type of error which can be identified in spotting errors. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel Auto Breathing Brains for more updates.